Good morning, folks. Welcome to the house of the Lord this morning on this damp old Sunday morning. But praise the Lord, it's nice in here, isn't it? Ah, it's nice to see each and every one of you. Praise the Lord. Would you stand with me today as we sing, as we begin to sing the song this morning? Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I have no idea what you've been through this week. I haven't been looking over your shoulder and, and vice versa. But I know one thing. We live in the same world where there's a devil that's real. But praise the Lord, there's also a God who loves us, who cares about us this morning. Praise God. So stand together, would you, as we sing this morning. Put on the garment of praise For the spirit of heaviness Lift up your voice to God Pray with the spirit And with understanding Go magnify the Lord Put on the garment of praise For the spirit of heaviness Lift up your voice to God. Praise with the Spirit and with understanding. Go make a fight, the Lord. Put on the garment of praise for the Spirit of heaviness. Lift up your voice to God. Praise with the Spirit and with understanding. Go magnify the Lord. Sing this. Well, John was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. He heard a voice from heaven. This is what it said. I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Behold, I live forevermore. Behold, I live. Behold, I live. John was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Heard a voice from heaven, this is what he said. I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Behold, I live forevermore. Behold, I live. Behold, I live. Turn to your neighbor and give him a nod, shake your head and say, you know, like, you know, <laughs> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, these are exciting times in which we are living, aren't they? Getting interesting. The price of gas is getting up there, isn't it? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Uh, those of us who like to go for a ride every now and then, is uh, you got to almost think twice now, haven't you? You know, only ones I can see that can afford it is the fishermen. You know. <laughs> oh, I tell you, these are interesting days in which we are living. But praise God, it's exciting times. We are living on the edge of something big. And I believe it's the coming of the Lord. This evening, I'll, this evening, I'm going to I'm going to preach on the man of sin. It's been a while since I since I tackled tackled uh, that subject, and I want to uh, I want to I want to look at that subject this evening a little bit in depth. So if you're coming this evening, come come prepared to hear some scriptures, and uh, perhaps you might like to invite somebody. And if you're watching today, we invite uh, we invite you to come out and listen to a message that will certainly certainly. Speak to hearts. The man of sin. That's for this evening. But this morning, let's continue to worship the Lord as we sing this morning. 
this great truth. Worthy of honor, worthy of glory, worthy of praise is He. Worthy of honor, worthy of glory, worthy of praise is He. He has redeemed me by the blood of the Lamb. He set my spirit. of honor and worthy of glory, worthy of praise is He. He has redeemed me by the blood of the Lamb. He set my spirit free. Worthy of honor and worthy of glory, and worthy of praise is He. Yes, worthy of honor and worthy of glory. Worthy of praise is He. Worthy of honor and worthy of glory. Worthy of praise is He. He has redeemed me by the blood of the Lamb. He set my spirit free. Worthy of honor and worthy of glory. And worthy of praise. Sing it again, would you? Yeah, worthy of honor, worthy of glory, worthy of praise is He. Worthy of honor and worthy of glory, worthy of praise is He. He has redeemed me by the blood of the Lamb, set my But great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Lift up the banner, let the anthem ring. Praises to our King. Mighty is He, yet yeah, great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He, great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Lift up your banner, let the anthem ring. Praises to our King. Stop your banner, let the anthem free. Praises to our King. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Now, folks, I don't know of any greater truth this morning that we could sing. The first part of that was worthy of honor and worthy of glory. And the second part of that was great and mighty is the Lord our God. That's who he is this morning. The world would paint him in a different way. But I want to declare him this morning as who he is revealed in his word. Hallelujah. The Lord God Almighty. Praise, praise his name. I want us to sing the old hymn this morning. I trust that this is still your testimony. I trust that this is still true for you. I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delight. Are you still determined to make heaven? Are you still determined to serve the Lord no matter what the world does? 
Some people have, have gotten discouraged and fell by the wayside and gave up, you know, and some people are, some people are struggling. But how about you this morning, whether you're in the sanctuary or whether you're watching us today by way of the internet, what's your determination today? I, the songwriter said, I am, I am resolved no longer to linger. And then he says, I am resolved to go to the Savior. Would to God that that would be the resolve of the people of Middle Arm today. I am resolved to follow the Savior, faithful and true each day. I am resolved to enter the kingdom, leaving the paths of sin. That's the problem. The majority of people want to go to heaven, but they don't want to live a life that corresponds with, with that. That's the problem. And the, sas, the last verse says, I am resolved, and who will go with me? What a question. You know, folks, if the reality of the situation is this this morning, the majority of the people in this community are lost. That includes your family. That includes you today if you don't know the Lord and if your heart is not right with Him. Let's sing this hymn together this morning. Praise the Lord. Let's stand together as we sing this hymn. Well, I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delight. Things that are higher, things that are nobler, sin and strife. He is the true one. He is the just one. He had the words of life. And I will patience to so glad and free. Jesus greatest I I will come to thee. I am resolved to follow the Savior, faithful and true each day. Heed what he saith, do what he willeth. He is the living way. And I Hey! 
God bless you this morning. Let's continue to worship the Lord this morning as we just shut yourself in with the Lord this morning, would you? Forget everything that has happened this week, if you, if you can. Forget your neighbor. They might have on a new coat or something this morning. So you already, you're already seen it by now. You know, and some of us might have a hair out of place. But, you know, you never know, right? But just forget all that this morning, would you? And just shut your eyes for a moment. And focus, focus on the Lord this morning. I can guarantee you, if you focus on the Lord, everything else will look insignificant. Where could I go if I could go to Jesus? And where could I turn if I could turn to Him? Who could I call but that precious name of Jesus. Where could I go to find sweet peace within? Yes, where could I go if I could go? I could turn the heat. Who could I call but that precious name of Jesus? Where could I go to find sweet peace with Him? Yes, where could I go? If I could go to Jesus, and where could I turn? If I could turn to Him, who could I call but that precious name of Jesus? Where could I go? To find sweet peace within. Sing this next song with me, would you? Oh, it's a song, holy angels cannot sing. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. It's a song. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Yes, it's a song holy angels cannot sing. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. I want was lost, but now I'm found. The angels never knew the joy that is mine. For the blood has never washed their sin. Silently they listen as we sing amazing grace. Cause it's a song holy angels cannot sing. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Holy angels, not sing. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Holy is the Lord, the angels sing. 
Just won't know the words to love lifted me. Cause it's a song holy angels cannot sing. Amazing grace. How sweet. How sweet the sound It's a song Holy angels cannot sing I once was lost But now I'm found Isn't that something? I once was lost, but now I'm found. Angels can't sing that. They're not able to sing, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Because there was no redemption for them. When they fell, from, when they fell out of favor with God in heaven and they rebelled, they were kicked out of heaven. And the Bible tells us that hell was a place that God prepared for the devil and his angels. And one day, of course, death and hell will give up their dead. They will be judged at the great white throne, and then they will be cast into the lake of fire, which burns forever and ever, which is the second death, separation from God forever. Now, there's not a person in their right mind today who wants to end up in that place. I implore you today, whether you're sitting here in the sanctuary of the Lord or whether you're watching online, I, enc I encourage you today to consider your ways. Consider the matter of your soul's salvation. You might have been raised in church, or you may have never set foot inside of a church, other than for a funeral or a wedding. Whatever your situation is today, Jesus came and gave his life for you, that you might live. And not just live here now, but that you might live eternally. For the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hallelujah. For those of us who know the Lord today, we can sing this song. He is my everything. He is my all. He is my everything. Both great small He gave His life for me Made everything Both great and small He gave His life for me Made everything new He is my everything None other will do Yes, He is my
for the great and the small. He gave his life for me, made everything. Yes, he gave his life for me. Made everything new. He is my everything. None other will do. Could I ask you to stand as we sing our... our, our uh, this hymn to, to, to change the order of our service. Kyle said to me this morning, Pastor, I haven't heard that one for a while. Maybe you haven't heard it for a while either, but let's stand and sing it this morning. We've been through a rough time, folks, in the past couple of years. We've all been through a rough time. And uh, I thought to myself this morning, you know, leave it to how my brain works. You know, there was a lot of people who, who, uh, who didn't understand why things unfolded the way they did. And, and I don't either to a large degree, and uh, where the, the, the vax pass and all this old stuff. But, you know, I, I, do, I do know in looking back at hindsight that if the government didn't do some of the things they did, we would have had a lot bigger mess than what we had. I believe that. Although we didn't do everything right. We, we are on this end of it now, this side of it. But, you know, a, a, a lot of those people who were, there was an outcry of people, you know, because, because certain people weren't allowed to come to church or anywhere if they never had the vax pass. But, you know, I, I figured that after everything was settled down, we'd see a mass influx, but that's not happening. They never showed up at the church door. I figured they'd be lined up waiting to get in this morning, you know. But that's not happening, is it? And, of course, I'm, I'm being facetious today. But I thank God for the faithful. And this is a song for the faithful this morning. I believe the true report. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And if I'm, not, if I'm not in the company of the faithful today, I know they're not all here, but if I'm not in the company of the faithful today, then I don't know where I am. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's stand and sing this today. I'm living in the presence of the King. Well, I believe the true report. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I've passed the inner court. Oh, glory be to God. I am all on Jesus' side at the altar sanctified. To the world and sin I die. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Come on, let's sing it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I've passed the river veil where the glories never fail. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Presence of the King. I'm a king and priest to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. By the cleansing of the blood. Oh, glory be to God. By the Spirit's power and might. I am living day and night. In the holiest place so bright. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Past the river veil where the glories never fade. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm living in the presence of the King. Well, I've passed the outer veil. Hallelujah to the Lamb which did once God's light conceal. Oh, glory be to God. But the blood has brought me to God's holiness so clean. Where there's death and suffering sin, hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I passed the river veil where the glories never fail. Hallelujah, hallelujah. presence of the King. I'm within the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I have passed
last he intervened. Oh, glory be to God. I'm all sanctified by the power of the blood. Now the Lord is by you both. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have passed the river Dale where the glories never fail. Hallelujah, hallelujah, living in the presence of the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I pass the river Dale where the glories never fail. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This morning's message is a follow-up from last week's. Now, some of you weren't here last week, but it doesn't really matter. It's just along the same lines, if you will, carrying things a little further. And uh, one of the pictures that's been burned into our minds in recent days and weeks is that of reporters, news reporters, wearing combat helmets and, and, and body armor, isn't it? Tracy, can you pull up a couple of pictures for me, the first one? Here they are. Oh, here's a member of the press wearing a, a ballistic helmet and a bulletproof vest, body armor. Can you bring up the next one? There's the vest, oh, and you got press marked on it. And we have seen, of course, some of those people have died. Some of those press members of the press have died. Perhaps the next one? Here you go. You got a, you got a bulletproof vest. And a lot of the ones that they're wearing over there in the other part of the world, they're homemade. You see them make them, right? They're homemade. And the ballistics helmet. Thank you, Tracy. Now, if these reporters need these kinds of things to keep them safe, how much more does an actual soldier need it who's involved in, 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 in combat and engaged in battle? Now, in preparation for this message today, I reached out to a, a, long, a, a long-time friend of mine since childhood who, 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 that I grew up with down on New Bay Road who have spent many years in the Canadian military. And uh, his name is Kev. Can you, can you pull up picture number four for me? This is my buddy Kev. I won't, I won't reveal his, his, his last name, but I'll give you his name as Kevin. He served... Kevin, my, my, my good friend Kevin has served two tours uh, under, under, under the UN, one in, one in Rwanda and the other one in Syria. So you can imagine the kinds of things that he's experienced. And he also served on a NATO tour in Bosnia, where this picture is taken in Bosnia at a, at a checkpoint. And I asked him about the effectiveness of the helmets and the body armor that the military use. I wanted a first-hand experience. Uh, I wanted a first-hand experience. I would have liked to have been able to try it on myself, but it wasn't, it wasn't possible without, without probably traveling to Gander. And he, Kev told me that the body armor, the bulletproof vest, it protects them from attacks that in, that from high-caliber rifles like snipers and, and shrapnel from grenades and other, and other fragments. And of course, the, the, the helmet, there's two ways you can refer to it as. A combat helmet or a, is actually a ballistics helmet. It helps to deflect low caliber rifles and bomb fragments. So I, I was wondering about how important it is, you know, to, 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 to the army. And of course, these things, they look, they, 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 they're so deceiving. Because when you have on your full gear, he said, when you have on your tactical gear with your bulletproof vest, your body armor, your ballistics helmet, and your rifle, you're about 40 to 50 pounds heavier than what you are normally. And as a matter of interest this morning, before we move on, the United States Army rates the effectiveness of their body armor at 67.9%. That's not bad. That's not bad. Now, of course, a soldier would be absolutely foolish to go into battle 
without wearing his body armor and his helmet, providing it's available to him. Kev told me the first couple of tours he did, there was no body armor. The Canadian soldiers had no body armor. Can you imagine going into armed places, going into military conflicts, high conflict areas with no gear. And speaking of armor this morning, turn with me, would you? I want to look at a passage of Scripture today. And there's a particular piece of armor that I want us to focus on in, in particular. But turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6, would you? Ephesians chapter 6. I was sitting in my office this week, wondering, preparing, you know, th- thinking and meditating what I could share this morning. And this is the, the direction that I felt to go. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, Paul says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. And he says, Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. And then he says the second time, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God. That's twice he says that. The whole armor of God. That you may, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. I want to declare to you this morning that, folks, this is the evil day. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Twice Paul mentions the whole armor of God. Now, there's not much point in putting on some of it and not the rest, is it? I mean, there's not much point in putting on your helmet and forgetting your, and forgetting your body armor if the sniper picks you off in the chest. Likewise, there's not much point in putting on your body armor if you don't wear your helmet and he picks you off in the head. The whole armor of God. And I want to go down through this this morning, but I want to focus on one piece in particular. First of all, he talks about the truth, having, having truth around your waist, or the belt of truth around your waist. Speaks of a life that is built upon the foundation of God's Word. And of course, conversely, the Word of God, the God of the Word. The belt of truth gives the, builder, gives the, gives the soldier, or the Christian, the believer, the ability to stand firm. Everything rests upon the belt of truth. Everything rests upon the truth. And it provides a place for other things to rest, like your sword, right? You haul your sword out of your, out of your, out of your, out of your belt, out of your waist. You know, things, things hang off it. Without the belt of truth, the soldier is not complete in his armor. And of course, I, I came to this conclusion. I said, unless our lives are rooted in and lived in the truth of God's word, then we will not be able to stand in the evil day. The breastplate of righteousness, folks. The the breastplate protects your vital organs, don't it? I would say there's a good many foos, a good many moose around the fall that would like to have one of them on. A breastplate of righteousness. <laughs> to be a bit safer. <laughs> from some of us. The breastplate of righteousness protects your heart and your lungs, the vital organs. Speaks of a holy life. One that is different and set apart from the rest. What makes you any different from the rest of the people in middle arm? It's because you endeavor to live a holy life. A life that is set apart from the rest of the world. The breastplate of righteousness. Speaks about a life that's lived in conformity to God's word and not the world. 
And folks, a holy life is a powerful defense. A holy life, a life that's lived holy, set apart for God. That's what holy means, set apart. A life that is lived a, a holy is a powerful defense against the attack of the enemy. It matters how we live our lives. Some people believe that it don't matter what you do. It don't matter how you live, you know. In the end, that it don't really matter. Uh, it do matter. It do matter how you live your life. Just ask the ones who once sat in church, and today they're so far away from God. It matters how you live your life, whether or not you stick around for, for a while or whether or not you find yourself outside. You see, when we allow sin to stick around in our lives, when we allow sin to dwell in our lives, we give Satan a foothold. He gets a foothold. And from that foothold, he attacks us. It gives him a place to attack us again. You see, sin gives Satan ammunition that he needs to render us ineffective. There's two things that he would like to do to you, Jack, this morning. He would like to, he would like to render your testimony ineffective, and he would love to ruin your reputation. If he could do that this morning, he has won a major victory, a major battle. And far too many of us have let him do that. Far too many have allowed him to do exactly that. Paul talks about the boots of peace. Having your feet, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Good footwear is important to a soldier who is trying to stand their ground. They fight for every inch of ground. Even in this modern day warfare, we hear tell of certain cities that have fallen. Because they've lost their ground. The Ukrainians or the Russians or whatever, vice versa. You lose, once you lose your, your ground, once you lose your foothold, you have to go backwards. You can't go forwards without a foothold. Paul talks about having our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You see, folks, as Christians, as Christians, we should always be prepared. I was put to the test even this week. Prepared. Because we never know when we're going to be given an opportunity to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we need to always be prepared. And Paul talks about having our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Always ready. Paul, Paul said to give an answer for the hope that lieth in you. Always be ready. He talks, of course, about the shield of faith, which is, which is very obvious. The shield of faith refers to the faith that we have in God. Causes us to trust Him in the seasons of life. I wouldn't go on the water, and I wouldn't go out in that water with everybody here as a skipper. I don't think so. Uh, I think if, uh, if Harv was the skipper, I'm one of them long runners, Harv, I'm not going with you. Or guy, I'm sorry, guy, I'm not going with you either. But if Rand is going as the skipper, I'll go anywhere in the world where he goes. Because I got, I got confidence in his ability, right? I got faith in his ability. Same thing with the Lord. Same, same thing. That's what I'm talking about this morning. Our faith in God should cause us to trust him no matter where life takes us. Right? The breastplate of righteousness the shield of faith, the boots of peace. You see, when, when times are good or when times are bad, the Bible says that the just shall live by, there it is, the just shall live by faith. Living by faith in Jesus above, trusting, confiding in His great love. Right? When the fiery darts of the evil one comes. The fiery darts of the devil comes. They'll rain down upon us. And, I, and, and this brings a picture to my, to my mind of, of movies like Braveheart and other pictures where they had the flaming arrows, you know, and they shoot them up in the air and they, and they come down and the people have their shields over their head and they protect themselves. The shield of faith. When the fiery darts come raining down, the shield of faith protects us. 
and allows us to stay in the game, stay in the fight. And of course, this morning, we finally come to the piece of armor that I want to concentrate on. Not that the rest are not important at all, but this is the piece that I want to focus on this morning. The helmet of salvation. We have reached a place in Newfoundland nowadays, interestingly enough, where now it's legal. You've got to wear a helmet if you're riding a side-by-side. -side. Before, it started off with quads, and now, even in a side-by-side, -side, gosh, you've got to wear a helmet. Crazy, isn't it? Absolutely crazy. But this is where we are. This, this is where we are. A helmet protects us, right? We know, we know that. But we don't want to wear a helmet in a side-by-side. -side. Pretty soon, you'll have to wear a helmet in your car. Ladies, that, means, that, mean, that, make, that makes for bad hair days. Wearing your helmet. Helmet is for the protection of what my mother used to refer to as the noggin, the head. It was a vital piece of the armor of a soldier. Because a blow to the head could result in instant death. The helmet worn by the ancient soldier that Paul was visualizing when he wrote this passage of Scripture was of utmost importance. It was made of solid metal. Tracy, pick, picture number five. Tracy, if you would. And it was shaped into the, the mold of a human head, a, a head of a soldier. And a lot of times it was, it, it was, it, it contained all kinds of jewels and stuff that they, that they would loot from, from, their, from, from the previous battles. And of course, the picture you have, and I was tempted to put it up there, of the Roman, of the Roman, of the Roman helmet, was the one with you know the, the big thing goes, the stripe goes up there. That was the picture that comes to your mind. But this was more, more like the, the helmets, helmets that, that Paul would have been referring to. In ancient times, armies employed cal, cal, calvaries. We don't nowadays. Well, nowadays it's, it's tanks and, and and the like. But in in Paul's day. Soldiers would go, there were, there were mounted soldiers who would come in on horseback, okay? Tracy, if you could bring up picture number six. And those soldiers would be carrying a sword there like that. Do you know what that's called, mister? Expert knife maker? KN knives? That's called a broadsword. That, that, that was a part, and a very important part of the, Romans, of the Roman soldiers that were mounted on, on, on horseback. That was a very important piece of their, of, their, of their armor. The Roman broadsword. A two-handed sword that was double-edged. And of course, the sword was swung by people. The, the next picture, Tracy, if you would. On, on, the, on, on the back of a horse. And of course, their object was to do one of two things to you. Which was important. Which, which was why the helmet was important. Their object was to either split your skull wide open. Or take the head right off your body altogether and decapitate you. Brother. And Paul encourages us to take the helmet of salvation. You see, folks, make no mistake about it this morning. Satan blows. Most of Satan's attacks takes place Right or wrong. If he can strike a blow against us that causes us to get discouraged or filled with doubt, he'll have no trouble taking us out of the battle or making us ineffective. If he can strike a blow to your head, it's a major blow. The helmet of salvation protects against discouragement. It protects us against negativity. It protects us against a whole bunch of things that can take us down and take us out and leave us ineffective. You see, he tries to get us to look at our sins. That'll do it. You start focusing on things that you did 40 years ago, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, and you let, those, you let that fester, and before you know it, you're not going to be in a very good place. Whether it's our sins or our failures, and, and I've made some doozies, I tell you. Or the problems in other people's lives. Perhaps you're not too bad with your own self, but you see every flaw that your neighbor got, you know? Or perhaps you see every flaw that your pastor got. 
Perhaps you're even, perhaps you got me figured out even better than Melinda do. Or perhaps you focus on your health issues this morning, which may be very real and very bad. Or something else in your life. You see, when he gets our attention off the Lord and on any of those things or all of those things, then we are in trouble. We find ourselves in a very volatile place. We are in a place where we can be defeated. You see, even those who have been in the battle for a long time, and I'm looking at some battle-weary soldiers here today. I'm looking at people today who I have a lot of respect for. I'm looking at some people here today that I have utmost respect for who've been on the road for many years. A lot of wisdom in this, in this building this morning. Perhaps there's no one here that I don't respect anymore it, when it comes to wisdom and, and things. Has Nita, if I could just if I could mention that. I have a lot of respect for you and the way you carry yourself. Even those who've been in the battle a long time for many years, Uncle Will, you've been around since time. Even people who've been on the road for many years and who have enjoyed much success can find themselves the victim of discouragement or disillusionment. You say, Pastor, what do you mean? How do you know that? Well, let me give you an example this morning of one person, just one, Elijah. Now, I doubt that many of us have seen the kind of things that Elijah did and enjoyed the kind of victories that he did. I mean, he was a powerful man. Yes, I know he lived many, many years ago. But he prayed, folks. I believe, I believe it. I believe the word. I believe he prayed and the fire came down, just like it said, and burned up the sacrifice and burned up the rocks and burned up the water and licked everything up. I, 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 believe, I, believe, he, I believe. I really believe that he prayed down the fire from heaven. I really believe that he outrun the chariot, Ahab's chariot, all the way from Mount Carmel to Samaria. Imagine, supernatural strength to outrun a, a chariot drawn by horses, and not only horses, the finest horses of that day. I really believe that he controlled the weather for three years. He said to Ahab, listen, my son, it's not going to rain until I said so. That's pretty good. My son, you... If things like that happen to me or you, perhaps we get a tendency to get a little puffed up and think it up or something. Hey, sonny boys. You know? Which often happens. But Jezebel threatens his life one day. Remember? Jezebel says, listen, my son, if God's be good to me, if by this time tomorrow you're not dead, man. You're not dead. Jezebel threatens his life. And what do we do? He takes off like a scalded cat to Beersheba where he gets down underneath a broom tree and he says, Lord, take my life. Kill me, Lord. <laughs> this is the same Elijah. Same guy. He was, very, he was discouraged and he was ready to quit. He learned the great spiritual truth that we need to learn as well today. That we pastors need to learn too. Spiritual victory does not insulate us against discouragement. You can be on top shelf this week. You could be on top shelf this week. And next week, you could be missing an action. You may have been saved for years. But if the devil can get you discouraged in your walk with God, like he have done with many people, he'll take you out of the battle. And when he takes you out of the battle, he'll take you out of church. He'll take you out of other things that matter, that really, really matter, that truly matter. And you'll end up involved in things and engaged in things that are trivial, that don't really matter, especially in light of eternity. If he can get you focused on your problems... If he can get you focused on your failures, if he can get you focused on the shortcomings of others, he'll overwhelm you. He'll cause you to be overwhelmed. And you'll get discouraged. When we allow problems or people or our pain to get us discouraged, the devil has won the battle. This is why we need the helmet of salvation to protect us. 
I'm not talking about a physical helmet. You know that, right? We need to make sure that the helmet of salvation is in place so we don't fall, fall prey to the devil's broadsword. Because he's going around like a roaring lion, Jesus said, seeking those he can devour. And he's not going to take it easy on you. Don't you go thinking that for a second. He's not going to take it easy on you because this is a little old me, you know. He'll take you and he'll shift you like he did want, he wanted to do with Peter. Shift you as wheat. He's not going to take it easy on you. Don't you doubt your salvation today. Perhaps you're home looking, watching, watching by, by way of the internet. And perhaps you found yourself at a, at a fellowship. Don't go doubting your salvation. Don't go doubting the faithfulness of God. Don't go doubting God's word. It's forever settled. Such doubt will paralyze you. It will paralyze the believer. And it will leave you feeling miserable. And like I said last week, it will leave you wallowing in defeat. Many are wallowing in defeat when we should be choosing to live in victory. Nothing will sideline us any quicker than having our peace robbed from us. Nothing will take us out any quicker than having the peace of God that passes understanding taken from us. When Paul says, take the helmet of salvation, he's not, re he's not referring to being saved, getting saved, because he's already talking to people who's already saved. He's talking about standing firm in your salvation. In the full assurance of the salvation that we already possess. Stand firm. And of course, lastly, I'll just mention this as I, as I bring my thoughts towards close. He also refers to the sword of the Spirit. And I would, of course, I would be remiss this morning if I never touched on it. Which is the Word of God, he says. You know something, you can, use the, you can use a sword for offense or you can use it for defense. A lot of us choose to use it in, de, in defense mode, defensive mode. You know, we, we choose to use it in defensive mode. But there are times, I believe, when we need to be in offensive mode and use it in the offensive mode. But far too many of us just, uh, just choose to use the sword in those times of defense. But you had to choose to use it, folks. You have to choose to use the sword. If you don't read the word and if you don't know what it says, how can you use it? David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Well, if David, somewhere on the line, never took the word and hid it in his heart, then how could he, how, how could he protect himself? First of all, you must read the word. You must, you must attempt to read the Word. And I, I, I say without a doubt, every one of us here, especially me, could use to read it more often. Now, a lot of times, I don't pick up a physical copy like this. There, I do sometimes, but I don't always pick, me, my generation that I am, I don't always pick up a physical hard copy of the Bible. A lot of my studies and a lot of my devotionals are done on computer on technology, on electronics. Because that's the way my brain works. I don't use a writing pen like you would. Like I, I noticed those two ladies there writing, writing down. Uh, the only thing I sign these days is my check. The only thing I write nowadays is my signature every now and then. That's it. Everything else I do is copy and paste or write down save. Save as, save as. Give it a name, save it. But if I don't take time, or if you don't take time, if we don't take time to read the Word, whether it's on a page or whether it's on an electronic device, if we don't take the time to put it in there, then it can't come back to our defense when we need it. And a lot of, there's too many of us nowadays. There are too many. Don't take this the wrong way, okay? But there are too many spiritual dummies going around. There are too many people. Our heads are filled with everything else except what truly, truly matters. Hallelujah. 
So I encourage you this morning. Twice, Paul tells us in Ephesians 6. Twice, he says, take up unto you the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand in the evil day. Folks, can it get any more evil than what it is? How much more evil can our society get? How much more corrupt can our governments become? Uh, I don't want to get into my message this evening, but how, how much worse can things really get? It's hard for us to fathom, isn't it? It's hard for us to comprehend. Except for the elect's sake. Except if it were possible to deceive the very elect. If you had any doubts, or if you have any doubts as to the lateness of the hour, I'm going to tell you now that it's so late. It is getting late. If ever we needed the whole armor of God, it is this day in which we're living. It's not going to get any easier. I can tell you right now that it's not going to get any easier. It's going to get harder and harder to serve the Lord. And some of you might say, well, Pastor, that's all right, because i only got a few more years left anyway, you know. Probably I'll be in the grave. But what about those of us who are planning on sticking around for a while? Hallelujah. Lord, help us to stand. Paul says, and having done all, to stand. God, help us to take up unto us the whole armor of God. Today, I've, I wanted to focus on the helmet of salvation. Standing firm in the full assurance of our salvation. Folk, if we're saved, don't you think we should act like it? If we're saved, shouldn't we act like it? If we're saved, shouldn't other people know it? Shouldn't other people be able to see it? If we're saved, let's act like it and let's live like it. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you today for your word, which is forever settled. We thank you for the words of Paul today when he encouraged us to take upon us the whole armor of God. And Lord, we cannot truly comprehend the visual because we're not living in Paul's day. We never ever seen a Roman soldier. But Lord, in my feeble attempt this morning, I've tried to describe some of the things that Paul was referring to. But Lord, help us today, Lord, to stand firm. Help us today, Lord, to stand with the, the truth around our waist. The breastplate of righteousness. Our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Help us, Lord, to take upon ourselves the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. All of these things this morning, Lord, are so important to us in our defense against the wicked one. For, Lord, we are, we are seeing an onslaught of evil. We are seeing the floodgates of hell. Lord, we are seeing things happen that we could never begin to comprehend. We never ever, well, Lord, even though your word tells us that these days would come, Lord, we find it, we, sometimes we find it hard to believe that we're in this day. I pray, Lord, that your people this morning will take to heart what they have heard. I pray this morning, Lord, that there's one person, whether they were here or whether they're watching online, and Lord, they're not ready to meet you. They're in their heart, they're not saved this morning, Lord, or they're not, they're not, they don't feel like they're, they're, they're in the right place with you. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would speak to them and woo them and draw them unto yourself. That backslider today, perhaps, Lord, who, who tuned in, and perhaps, Lord, they feel so far away from you, but yet, Lord, they're as close as the mention of your name. So speak to hearts and lives this day, I pray. For I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.